Don't forget to check out and order your copy of our latest book, Stiff Arming Football Myths. You can find this on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Be on the lookout for other titles, and we have this book available in both paperback and PDF form. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2015 NFL team preview for the New York Jets. And let's get this video kicked off by taking a look at the quarterback position. Geno Smith is entering his third season as the Jets signal caller and is still looking for his first season of continuous growth game after game. What has plagued Smith over the first two seasons has been inconsistency, and that could be from a combination of things like scheme, personnel, organization, or even Smith himself. The good part is that the one constant Smith has shown is toughness and the ability to play at a high level. So we know he's capable, and this year he'll have his best receiving options he's ever had at his disposal. I like rookie Bryce Petty as well. I think he's a good athlete that was highly productive at Baylor, and I doubt he'll be the number two guy, although he should. But veteran Ryan Fitzpatrick will try and be a mentor to both Smith and Petty, but doubt that Fitzpatrick sees the field as well this season in New York. In the backfield, the Jets don't have a true bell cow, but they do have a group of guys that I feel are capable of keeping a defense honest. In the offseason, the Jets brought in both Steven Ridley and Zach Stacy to team up with Chris Ivory and Bilal Powell. None of the four are threats in the passing game, in my opinion, but collectively, they could give the Jets 15 to 1,700 yards total, which would be excellent for this offense. I will say this, a healthy Steven Ridley does give the Jets a little bit more juice than the others. At fullback, third-year man Tommy Bohannon is a solid player returning from injury, but I would keep an eye on free agent signee J.C. Copeland out of LSU, who is a punishing blocker but also has better running skills and softer hands than Bohannon, and that will be an interesting battle to watch throughout the course of the preseason. A very good group of receiving options for the Jets this season. Going out and grabbing Brandon Marshall in a trade gives the Jets a legit number one wide receiver and also allows Eric Decker and Jeremy Curley to slide to a more natural number two and number three slots respectively. Marshall is a tremendous player that will instantly make Geno Smith's life that much easier. Another player capable of doing so is rookie second round pick Devin Smith from Ohio State. Smith is an excellent intermediate and deep threat type of a receiver both of which tie into the part of the passing game where Geno Smith excels. That's a formidable quartet right there, which then allows the Jets to continue to develop young talents at the position like Quincy Inua and Shaq Evans. Inua, in my opinion, is in the mold of Eric Decker, and they still have T.J. Graham and Walter Powell providing depth and help on special teams. At tight end, Jeff Cumberland and Jace Amaro are viable targets in the passing game. Expect bigger things from Amaro in year two. In free agency, Kellen Davis was added as a blocking tight end, but be on the lookout for undrafted free agent West Saxon out of South Alabama, who had an excellent week of practice at the East-West Shrine game as an H-back option. So needless to say, the Jets have some serious ammo this year on the perimeter. The right side of the Jets' offensive line, in my opinion, is where the questions are. Right now, both James Carpenter and Bruno Giacomini are penciled in as starters. Both are highly inconsistent. In my opinion, both Dakota Dozier and Ode Abouche should be the starters at right guard and right tackle, respectively. Dozier played left tackle in college and has tremendous athleticism on both ends, and Abushi, I believe, got better as a rookie. Left tackle and center are rock solid with DeBrickishaw Ferguson and Nick Mango. Left guard Willie Colon has to cut down on the penalties, which seem to come at inopportune times. I would also say that Brian Winters would be a viable option there as well. The Jets have the pieces, but it's all about finding the right mix to make it work. The Jets have quietly put together one of the best defensive lines in the league in Mo Wilkerson, Sheldon Richardson, and rookie first-round pick Leonard Williams out of USC. Nose tackle Damon Harrison is also a quiet stud playing over the center. Now, granted, they'll be without Richardson for the first four games of the year, and that's a key loss, so they'll look to veterans like Kevin Vickerson and Stephen Bowen to pick up the slack. Nice battle for the backup nose tackle job, in my opinion, with T.J. Barnes and rookie seventh-round pick Deion Simon out of Northwestern State. So it'll be interesting to see how Gang Green rotates their defensive line this season.
I like what the Jets have on the inside and what they could potentially have on the edges at linebacker. Both inside linebackers David Harris and Demario Davis are rock solid. Harris is up there in age, so I think undrafted free agent Taiwan Jones out of Michigan State has a good chance to make the roster and be groomed as an heir apparent. They also brought in free agents Joe Mays and Jamari Lattimore as well. The biggest issue, I believe, was the inability to create pressure on the outside on a consistent basis. Outside linebacker Calvin Pace hasn't shown any signs of slowing down, and he was a lone consistent threat game in, game out. Now, Quentin Copels has gotten better, but lacks the consistency. This is why rookie third-round choice Lorenzo Malden out of Louisville was an excellent selection for the Jets. Malden can play on either side, can rush the passer, he can play the run and drop back in coverage equally as well. Jason Babin is another wily vet with some ability left in the tank, and I do like both IK and them Kampale and undrafted free agent Deion Barnes out of Penn State. I had a high grade on both guys coming out of college. Barnes, I believe, was a legit second round talent. I think he'll surprise in preseason. Keep an eye on another undrafted free agent in Julian Hauser of Clarion, a Division II program. He's versatile enough to play inside and outside backer. The Jets by far have the best secondary in the AFC East, and getting both Darrell Revis and Antonio Cromartie back in the fold was huge. Both players still have a lot of big-time game left in the tank, and in free agency, they brought over Buster Screen from the Cleveland Browns, giving them a very stout nickelback. And I do believe the Jets have four good young players that are now going to be able to grow their game slowly. D. Milner, Marcus Williams, Dexter McDougal, and Keith Lewis are four guys I wouldn't mind starting on my secondary, starting in my secondary, I'm sorry. And they are all really good players that will now be relegated to fourth and fifth spots and also special teams. At safety, Marcus Gilchrist was brought in to man the free safety spot after doing so solidly in San Diego. Gilchrist has the ability to match up versus wide receivers as well. That also allows last year's first round pick Calvin Pryor to move to a more natural, strong safety spot in which he could blossom this season. Good depth here as well with Jaquan Jarrett and Antonio Allen. And I also like the young talents in Rontez Miles and undrafted free agent Darrell Eskridge out of Syracuse, who has a good chance to make the roster. So just to echo the point I made earlier, this is a very impressive and deep secondary with a ton of talent. The Jets have a solid kicking unit with kicker Nick Folk and punter Ryan Quigley. The coverage units, I believe, should be outstanding because of the depth at receiver, cornerback, and also linebacker. But I wonder about the return game. They don't have one guy that you can say that's a threat back there to return kicks or punts. I look at Walter Powell as a guy that could possibly rustle away a spot to shine like he did at Murray State in that same role. And if he can do that, then that'll kill two birds with one stone. Otherwise, they'll have a big question mark throughout the season at both kickoff and punt returner. I have the Jets finishing third in the AFC East and how this offense goes, so does the team. And I think the surprise will be the passing game will become more relied upon than the running game this year. Defensively, they'll be tough to move the ball against and will end up being a top five to top eight defense in the NFL. And if the offense hits the ground running from week one, then Gang Green could find themselves fighting for that final playoff spot. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Jet Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.